Fire control. Yeah, it's Katoomba Fire Station here. We've got a call from Sydney from our control yep. to Bush, half a K west of the Mount Wilson turnoff on the Bells Line Road. I suppose you're already out there. No, I went trying to work out exactly where it is. Yeah. And what's, what's your distance? A half a kilometre west of the Mount Wilson turnoff. Okay. On the Bells Line. Okay. Are you responding in the unit? Oh, half a K west. I'll give it to him now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. While firefighters battled more than 60 fires across New South Wales, the worst fears of many were realised when a bushfire broke out in the Mount Wilson area on Friday, the 7th of January, 1994. Believed to be deliberately lit, the fire had the potential to endanger every home in the mountains. At Melrose Park, an Army Iroquois helicopter arrived from Townsville in the early afternoon and took a group of firefighting authorities to survey the new threat the rapidly expanding fire front at Mount Wilson. Fire crews on the scene began calling for urgent assistance to try to contain the burgeoning monster. Engulfed in thick billows of smoke, the Bell's line of road was quickly closed to traffic. Backburning was begun in a futile effort to halt the devouring inferno. But later that afternoon, it roared out of control across the Bell's line of road and into the Gross Valley. The fire eventually spread from a half kilometre front to a fierce conflagration nearly 10 kilometres wide and 35 kilometres long, stretching from Blackheath to the Lower Blue Mountains. Proceeding unabated, it weaved its way through the rugged terrain throughout the night, one red front threatening the Mount Toma region and another creeping one and a half kilometres an hour to Falconbridge where it emerged early on Saturday morning to menace houses in Gross Road and Chapman Parade. Hundreds of South Australian firefighters, having made the long 20-hour journey in their vehicles, had been directed first to Sutherland in Sydney and then came to help in the mountains.
Residents all over the mountains prepared their homes for the terrifying onslaught. Endeavour, Buckland and Springwood nursing homes were all evacuated. The elderly and frail residents moved to the safer ground of the naval base HMAS Nirimba at Quakers Hill and the RAAF base at Richmond. The Springwood Hospital transferred its patients to Lithgow Hospital and Governor Philip Hospital in Penrith. As the fire marched on, many families packed their prized possessions and left, congregating at the Springwood Civic Centre and the Penrith Leaks Club. Other contingents arrived from Victoria, the Northern Territory, Tasmania and Western Australia. The State Emergency Services, Army, RAAF and Navy all prepared to wage war beside the locals in this part of the biggest firefighting operation Australia has ever seen. About 2.30pm on Saturday, another suspicious fire started near Bilbao. A task force of 22 firefighting vehicles moved into that area. Meanwhile, a three kilometre front was moving ever closer to the towns of Winmalee and Hawkesbury Heights. Thick, choking black smoke blotting out an angry red sun, reducing visibility to a minimum, produced an eerie scene as the fire bore down on Winmalee. Sir, we request two extra tankers, possibly three, for Crampton Drive and towards Linksview Road. All through Crampton and Nagel Avenue. There is only one waterboard tanker there with a small striker over a long stretch for property protection. A lot of houses in this area with a fire moving quickly towards this area. Ideal conditions for a firestorm. Dry, volatile bush, searing 40 degree heat and Cyclone 4's winds swirling wildly whipped the blaze into a frenzy. Suddenly flames leaping 40 or more metres in the air surrounded the backyards and homes in Summerhays Estate, White Cross Road and other nearby streets. Miraculously, no properties were lost. Firefighting appliances hold between 2,000 and 4,500 litres of water, but they can be emptied in just three minutes during an emergency. Chemical wetting agent was added to the water to increase its effectiveness. The fire quickly roared down the hill like an express train, minutes later hitting Hawkesbury Heights with full force and hungry for revenge. Yeah, Lewis, Red. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, I'm in Rock Street. We appear to be in the front of the fire front. I've got one bush fire tanker. The fire front's coming on the houses, not yet here. But the wind's certainly blowing in this direction, bringing the fire here. And uh, we've got property done. 60 kilometre per hour winds fanned the flame into a towering inferno which enveloped homes, many escaping with just minor scorching, leaping over some and engulfing others.
firefighters from different states battle the unbearable heat and blinding smoke with courage and determination working side by side. Fire tankers lined the roads bumper to bumper. One unit became temporarily engulfed in a circle of flame. As the flames roared over them, it was like hell on earth, an experience many never want to repeat. Thanks to their incredible efforts, most houses were saved against phenomenal odds. Amazingly, just two homes were lost in Booker Road, one in Yvonne Road, and a hundred-year-old Sandstock cottage on Hawkesbury Road was destroyed, along with another in Roberts Road and a youth hostel, before the fire continued its way down the valley toward Yarramundi. Cement trucks, milk tankers, even petrol tankers and effluent trucks were filled with water and brought into the fight. They were kept busy refilling the fire trucks as their supplies were quickly used up. Heartbroken residents, stunned and bewildered by the destruction, returned once the fury had passed, in some cases to charred ruins, precious possessions gone forever. Several lost sheds, fences, sun decks, gardens, and their children's playing equipment. I've never, never seen a fire that I could through. Unbelievable. Bushland, once lush and rugged, now on every side resembled an ashen desert, a war zone. Cooler weather arrived Sunday and backburns were begun, 
but erratic winds persisted in harassing firefighters. Forces battled to rescue the tiny township of Bilpin, population 404, as fire closed in on two fronts. We're packing up, we've got to move out of here and protect some houses and property further down. Can you make up at this point? Over. Uh, Commander Gardner, yeah, we can make up uh, uh, and get up safely at this point. It's not completely secured, but it doesn't look like it's going to make any difference from where I'm standing. Over. Roger. Try and do the best you can. We've got to try and pull out of here till Over. Okay, a few knock-off pumps and turn off me on compass 38 line, please. Uh, make our way up now. Over. Commander Gardner, this is Region 3 Command. Then Region 3 Command. Yeah, message from Panaroo and Burnside Tanker that are requesting, requesting urgent assistance. Roger. Volunteer helicopter pilots made reconnaissance flights over the fire front, while others flew to nearby dams, constantly refilling thousand litre monsoon buckets to water bomb the approaching fire flanks, wave after wave showering down, while the ground troops persistently forced back the flames. Karajong Heights, Bowen Mountain and Yarramundi all were threatened but there was no property loss apart from a number of storage sheds and fences. All day firefighters chased the tail of the fire around Singles Ridge and the southern side of Winmalee. As the wind increased spot fires that were simmering down in the valley were whipped up. After lunch it lashed out again at houses along Hawkesby Road a firestorm erupting, terrifying in its intensity, sweeping through the treetops with startling speed. Wimberley Senior from headquarters, Captain Blue. Wimberley Station, go ahead. Uh, ah, yeah, this fire which uh, you said us to go along to on the Hawkesby Road is uh, absolutely crowning, uh, flame height approximately 30 metres. Make sure all the uh, vehicles in that area are uh, clear from that area. Roger so far. Roger so far. What's your exact position down there, please? Uh, it's approximately uh, four kilometres uh, down over. Roger, are you uh, on the, the northern or the southern side of Hawksby Road? Uh, we're right on the uh, main road at the moment. There's houses on the, the furthest on the uh, southern side. I would consider evacuation. Is this right out to Hawksby Road over? Uh, it's on the eastern uh, side from your station. It is uh, going like a train. All the houses on the uh, on the on that same side of the fire on the southern side would consider very much evacuation immediately. Yeah, east Windley Station way out headquarters from East Three over. Uh, east Three from headquarters, Captain. Yes, yeah, so I'm on side over. That's affirmative.
Now just get them deployed out here for the moment, over. The rocket. We have a fire that's come out of the gully and is creating some concern here. The uh, Sierra group is at the northern end, uh, correction, the eastern end of the fire. We have numerous bush fire brigades at the uh, western end of the fire. This uh, is coming up out of the valley behind the houses in Hawkesbury Road. This could create a bit of a problem here. However, there's a mile of appliance over. Every house had a fire unit assigned to it, a line of volunteers and a curtain of water their only protection against the huge wall of flame that came to terrorise them. Once again, relief as all escaped unharmed. New blazers targeted Lee Road, Samana Road and Reed Circle late in the afternoon. I'm currently situated right at the end of Heather Road. I have one, two, three, three bushfire brigade tankers at this location. No New South Wales brigades. The fire is currently in front of Heather Road, approximately 500 metres to a kilometre away from the end. Heading in a southerly direction towards uh, Tall Timbers Road and and Moray, over. Yeah, uh, Lewis, I would suggest uh, send uh, one appliance down here at least to uh, give us a uh, further sit reps should this uh, change down here, over. Yeah, Dale, Lewis, Blue, we have uh, Air Force tenders and uh, Bushfire Brigade tankers. I've yet to see any uh, people. I'll carry on, over. Yes, sir. End of Tall Timbers Road. The fire is now burning behind houses in Samana Place, over. There are units here, uh, adequate units here, over. So, sir, 21, 20. In my opinion, it confirms that what you think it's uh, travelling in a southerly direction towards Heather Glen Road and Bridge Road, over.
station, we've got the rest truck at work. Doing a good job uh, wetting down the house from roofing, over. Research 2124. Making the most of a lull in the weather, fire crews began a backburning procedure at Blackheath on Sunday evening. On Hat Hill Road, a hostel was evacuated as the fire threatened, frightened residents not wanting to leave. Mild conditions on Monday allowed a massive operation to contain the fire in Grass Valley and prevented further destruction. Called a black line, the strategy was to create a burnt out buffer zone between the main fire and thousands of homes. A strip flanking the Great Western Highway from Springwood to Mount Victoria and another to the north running from Bilpin to Bowen Mountain was carved out by giant earth moving equipment in a race against the expected worsening weather later in the week. The roar of bushfire was replaced by the sound of bulldozers and chainsaws as Air Force and Navy personnel and hundreds of volunteers hacked out fire trails and backburnt with drip torches. Firebombing began in some of the less accessible areas. The Great Western Highway was closed temporarily at Blackheath during the evening, while the Bell's line of road was closed to all but residents between Bell and Currajong. Before all the fires were extinguished, more than 70,000 hectares of Blue Mountains National Park had been burnt. The air was heavy with smoke and ash, resting like a grey blanket over the landscape, while the back burning continued, producing the highest pollution levels ever seen in Sydney. Communities were welded together as hundreds of volunteers worked together in the field and behind the scenes. Salvation Army and service clubs kept the troops fed and the drinks flowing, and many food outlets provided meals. Having survived on an average of three hours sleep a night in an effort to bring things under control, the tension eased and fire crews were able to return home, having risked their lives in one of New South Wales' most dire emergencies. They served on the front line with exceptional bravery, endurance and skill. The National Parks and Wildlife Service and the Blue Mountain City Council will assess the damage and determine what is to be done. The Blue Mountains wildfire of January 1994 came following a period of unprecedented bushfire activities throughout the entire state of New South Wales. The scenes graphically captured in this production are, I believe, a tribute to the dedication and to the determination of all of the firefighters who averted what could have been a far, far greater tragedy. The firefighters should never ever count the losses. They should be extremely proud of the houses and the lives that they saved. The tribute to the firefighters is the fact that we only lost five properties in the fires in the lower mountains. As the fire approached, the Windmalee Hawkesbury Heights area had so much heat fanned by such strong winds that it made the firefighters' job very, very difficult. And houses that uh, were had vegetation around them and some that had trees growing right up next to them unfortunately were lost in those five that were lost. During my involvement in firefighting over the last 20 years, this fire weather and this fire was certainly the most severe that I have faced in my career. The cooperation of all agencies, individuals, businesses and the local community was the only ingredient that made this operation such a total success. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the firefighters and the wider community for the great job that they did in the recent bushfires. This catastrophe could have been avoided if we'd have had a proper program of hazard reduction in place. These have been an extraordinary sequence of fires. One of the great things that's come out of it is really how successful that we've been. There's going to be a lot of talk and uh, there will be in some cases rightly about the need to get better for the future. But the real lesson that we've learned is how well our practices have worked over the last few years. 
The fires of January 1994 have taught us many lessons. We were expecting a catastrophe in the Blue Mountains. With everything that was occurring, it was what the predictions were telling us. But that catastrophe was averted by the superhuman effort of all of the firefighters and emergency services personnel. Not only do I pay tribute to the firefighters and emergency services personnel, I pay tribute to the entire Blue Mountains community that came out in force, the community united to avoid that catastrophe. New South Wales Premier John Fay visited Winmalee and Hawkesbury Heights on Thursday to speak with residents and to pay tribute to the firefighters and their supporters. But we're alive, that's the most important well, that's thing. That's important thing. You were here at the time? No, we'd left. They told us to get, get out, out, so yeah. you know, the volunteers, yeah. they, are, they are heroes. Incredible, aren't they? They are incredible. Yeah. Oh, we didn't see you. So many more houses go up here, it's yeah. beyond. It's all mm. across the state. And you got somewhere to stay? Yeah, we're just around the corner actually. Because right. we wanted to stay here and because mm. this is our beloved up in the mountains. Love it. And mm. it's not gonna it's not gonna make me run. I'm gonna stand here and fight it. Wind, like the wind it was coming this way and then the wind sort of swung around and then it came over the road and down around the back. Just here, day forty four. A lot of work to do, kids, to cleaning up. Yes, that's not good with the old cooker barrow, is it? Oh, Barry, I can tell you something about it. <laughs> Maybe even the dog, but not, to, no. not the birds. No. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the community, because this brigade is a community organisation that without their support, we couldn't have been able to function for the last week and a half. Yeah. And um, we still have a lot of people to thank for the community and the, the wider community. We've had offers of help from organisations, Mascot, uh, Meadowbank, Botany, people are donating equipment to help bring this up online. To, to all the people all over Australia who support us, thank you very, very much. We got out lightly. Well, thank you very much. I'm just you showing great courage as well. And, and uh, all of this effort, of course, has uh, meant that you've still got a community left, I think. In the aftermath, and certainly during the terrifying wildfire, many people resorted to prayer. Public parades and services of thanksgiving were held at a number of centres. A major event for the Blue Mountains was at the Civic Centre Springwood, where Bushfire Commissioner Phil Koperberg led the service in the Fireman's Prayer. Please join with me in the traditional Firefighter's Prayer. When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late. And save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weaker shout quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling to give the best of me, to guard my every neighbour, protect his property. And if according to your will I have to lose my life, please bless with your protecting hand my children and my wife. If this video does nothing more than to vividly remind people how horrifying wildfire is in the Blue Mountains, and to remind them to always be well prepared, then it will have achieved its major aim. Let us never forget.